Well, welcome to the Faithful Fathering Podcast. Thank you again for joining us. This is Rick Worth with Faithful Fathering Initiative in Texas, the founder and president of Faithful Fathering, where the mission is to encourage and equip dads to be faithful fathers and to uh, engage dads in raising a godly generation by reinvigorating the church on the fathering front. Uh, the topic is the, of this podcast series is Dad Stepping Up. So we're initiating a discussion around uh, Dad stepping into the three tenets of faithful fathering. So uh, before I introduce our guest again, I want you to know faithful fathering exists to help you become the dad, the next generation needs to see. Uh, I'll point you to the website, faithfulfathering.org, where you can uh, click on the For Dads button, and uh, you'll see a history of vlogs and studies that you can uh, download, access, all all for free, that really complement these podcasts. And uh, I uh, always encourage you to uh, go back through the library of podcasts to uh, see what's been recorded previously as well. But uh, this will be a very practical discussion. As we always uh, say, uh, we try to provide, uh, and I pray that it blesses you on your journey as the man, husband, and father you're called to be. And in the studio with me today, again, is, uh, is Matt uh, Hammerski. He's uh, the pastor of Risen, Risen Nation Church and uh, also husband and uh, father. So, uh, 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 Matt, thanks again for joining us, and I, I know that uh, we, we've had uh, talked a little bit about your background, and, uh, and I, I heard some great things that I'd, I'd like to expand upon on your relationship with your dad. Yeah, um, yeah, my uh, my dad's awesome. <laughs> That's all I can say. He's he, he's a really great man. Um, he um, he's taught me a lot. He's um, He's got such a big sense of humor, and I think that's kind of what molded me a lot. He's very he's very sarcastic at times, and we would always joke, and I enjoyed that about my dad. Uh, he loved to play pranks on me. He loved to scare me. He loved to do all sorts of things, and we would just have a blast. <laughs> um, he did. He traveled, though, a lot for work, and sometimes he'd be gone for two months at a time. Oh, my. Uh, and, and that was tough. But the thing my dad did really well is when he was home, he was home. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so right when he would come back into town, he'd usually check me out of school early. He would tell the front office that uh, I had a dentist appointment. And so he would check me out. And I'm thinking, oh, I don't want to go to the dentist. And, and I'd show up and there's my dad. And I'd realize, oh, I'm not going to the dentist. We're, we're going to be going <laughs> he lied. Um, you know, to a movie. <laughs> or we loved watching movies together. Uh, you know, um, we, we did all sorts of stuff together. And so when he was home, he was very intentional with me. Um, you know, and, and um, he had also, he'd stepped in and, and talk about dad stepping up. He had stepped up uh, to raise two kids that technically biologically weren't his own uh, with my mom. And uh, so I have a half brother and sister who are older than me and he stepped up and, and was their dad. Um, and now he wasn't perfect, of course. And he, in fact, he wasn't even saved uh, walking with Jesus until I was about 12 years old uh, is okay. when he made the decision to follow Christ. Um, and so all of that to say, my dad was just so loving uh, and he was very present. And mm-hmm. even though he traveled a lot, like he was literally gone, mm-hmm. he was still present in my life in a big way. And when he was home, he was home. And mm-hmm. uh, that made a huge difference in me. Uh, sure. I know I would not be the person I am today had it not been for my dad making the intentional choice to be present all the way from my birth to to now even of just encouraging me, um, you know, cheering for me uh, and, and just believing in me. Fantastic. So. And how that, uh, you know, there's a lot of dads that are uh, around a lot, but they're really not as engaged physically yeah. as, as you as you reference there. So yeah. how did that shape your fathering? And, and have you have you looked and realized that maybe some uh, some of your priorities, you had to compromise some of your maybe your, even your uh uh, your your passions to come back in and be the father you're called to be. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I think um, I I can get very um, you know I can be very locked into something, mm-hmm. uh, and once I get locked into something, I want to see something finished. So even like currently, for example, we're going through a, a building remodel. We're about to move into a new facility with our church, and that has been just all consuming in our home. Sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it's it's literally taking time of where I'm working up at the church and say, okay, no, I need to be home for dinner. Mm. I, I need to come home and I need to, I need to see my son. I need to see my wife. I need to be there at the table mm-hmm. uh, and make sure that they know this is the priority. Mm-hmm. So even though I've got all these things and people and other things pulling on me that they get my attention and, and, and they are not on the back burner. 
Hmm. And so really having to prioritize that way and really taking kind of notes from my, my dad. Uh, he taught me a lot of just being, again, being intentional. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, uh, we I mentioned briefly that he grew up, uh, he traveled all the time as hopping around from place to place. He grew up in some really rough places, grew up in the projects, grew up, didn't have a whole lot. I mean, he joined the military. When he joined the military, he gained weight in basic training just because mm-hmm. he was eating a regular meal mm-hmm. three times a day. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so he didn't have anything. Mm-hmm. And he, he went to a different school every year and he hated that. He hated having to move again, having to move again, having to move again. So when he had, when they had me, he said, no, he's going to go to the same school from start to finish. We aren't going anywhere. And so he made that, he made that things work at work. He made sure that he wouldn't lose something that would cause him to go somewhere else because he was committed to giving me an experience he never had. And so taking notes from that, I, I always want to make sure that my son now, who's had people that have just kind of left him, and which is actually kind of a trigger we had to work through with him of being abandoned, sure, right? Sure. Is sure. that I let him know when I'm leaving, hey man, I'm hey buddy, I'm I'm going right down here. If you need me, hit me up on the phone. We just got him a cell phone, so he's excited about that. Uh, but I'm like, if you need me, call me. You know, he will. He'll Facetime me. He'll text me. Uh, he'll send me memes, and we'll laugh and joke with each other. So a lot of that I learned from my father, uh, but from my father in heaven of knowing that he's present with me, that he loves me, mm. um, that he shows me he's there. Mm-hmm. You know, and and so. I, I take that and kind of restructure things that I would be drawn to do with my personality to, to focus, 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 and get this thing done and say, no, wait, that's not as important as, again, spending that intentional time at home. And, you know, and I don't always get it right. You know, sometimes just recently my wife was like, hey, you've been away quite a bit. Maybe, um, maybe, and I, and I know immediately. Just I'm like, a subtle hand. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah just, just a heads up. This is before I throw something at you, right? Like this is, so you know, uh, and I immediately know, oh, okay, you know, hit a guardrail there. I, I need to come back into focus and reprioritize uh, my time uh, mm-hmm. so that, you know, my son always knows that he's not a burden, um, but that he's a, a joy in my life and I love spending time with him. Right, so you evaluate your priorities as, as you move on there. And I, mm-hmm. you, it sounds like you've given your bride a, the right to, oh, to yeah. intercede and say, Yo, yeah, she hey, does. your priorities may be a little bit cattywampus right now. Yeah, right? she likes to call marriage at points. Uh, she'll <laughs> say, hey, I'm calling marriage tonight. You know, we're going on a date. Or I'm calling marriage tonight. Cancel whatever you've got going on. And I do. I just say that's an agreement we reached a long time ago uh, that, you know, and part of this couple, it's multi-layered that obviously I want my marriage to be healthy, ah. you know, mm-hmm. the, of course. Uh, but also, I don't want my wife to ever look at ministry as the other woman. Right. Right. And uh, and that to me is um, I think it, it grieves the heart of God yeah. that we would prioritize ministry over my own wife right. Absolutely. when that she's my first ministry. And that's hard, too. isn't it? you find that that you're doing what you're passionate about yes. and it can happen. But uh, just remind dads that didn't tune into the previous podcast that uh, Matt had been married 10 years when he took in a uh, teenager yeah. as, a, as, a, as a foster child that is now in the process of adopting. And so it's it was quite a curveball to the to the whole uh, initiative here. But I, we did yeah. share last podcast the three things dad, men always have to say is I'm I was wrong. I'm sorry. Will you forgive me in marriage? Mm-hmm. But you don't have to say that near as much if you do what you just did was mm-hmm. when she calls marriage night say yes, dear. Yes, <laughs> yes, You're right. Dear. Of course, anything <laughs> you want. <laughs> yep. No, I definitely have found that to be uh, very helpful, <laughs> and uh, I, I've lived a pretty long and healthy life so far so there you that's go, yeah. good and you don't care for it to be shortened yes exactly but, uh is there uh, how about some other passions that uh, that you know when you're obviously you were married 10 years and mm-hmm. you, you're certainly in, in passionate about ministry so that requires a lot of time and effort yeah. and what have you were there other hobbies or interests that you were heavily invested in that you've now backed away from uh, as a dad yeah uh, so music I was extremely into music I was in a rock band for a while that uh, that was actually you know doing a lot of big things uh, and so it really kind of it started to come in between church and was it going to do this or that? That thing ended up actually the guy leading it ended up stepping away and saying, "Hey, I'm not going to do this anymore." So that really kind of fell apart on its own. Mm-hmm. So it kind of helped made the decision easier where I didn't have to choose. Right, right. Um, but I would I'd spend a lot of time on music. I'd spend a lot of money on music, uh, and so now that's definitely decreased. Okay. <laughs> I don't um, uh, now. It, the benefit for me is my son is very into music. Mm-hmm. So it still allows me to have that connection, but now I just make it with him. Mm-hmm. And so now I'm buying him the guitar or I'm right. buying him the drum set and, you know, those right. kind of things and, and showing him how to do those things. And it still keeps me connected to a passion, but I don't I don't get the time that I used to get. And that's multi-layered. That's not just family. That's also pastoring a church is now 
you yeah. know, I'm spending my free time. When I have free time, I'm spending a lot of time reading, uh, spending a lot of time the, the, the doing those things. And then at, at night, me and my wife love to spend time just watching shows that we love together. Right. Um, and so I used to love video games. I used mm. to be a big video game person. Uh, I still like them. Gamer, a gamer. Yeah, okay. a gamer. Okay. I, I, I still like them, but... I hardly ever have the time, you know, well, and it's, that, it's, I think that, that, you know, that's what we have to, you know, that's the message of dad is we, this first tenet of faithful fathering is prioritizing yeah. your physical presence, which means that you do need to reevaluate priorities. Yeah. You need to uh, know what you need to let go of. You know, yeah. uh, my passion was tennis and uh, oh. my son fell in love with baseball. Huh. So uh, I retired from tennis for about 13, 14 years while he was in his passion of, uh, you know, uh, he, he played all sports with a ball, but, but he yeah. eventually uh, just fell in love with baseball and was blessed to play at a high level and played at the University of Houston. But the, uh, but the, the, the investment of time to throw batting practice at Fungo and those types of things were outside of my, yeah. uh, uh, you know, my, my uh, wheelhouse, if you will. Yeah. I, I was trying to brainwash him to fall in love with tennis. Yeah. That didn't work out so well. <laughs> trying to give that, a little influence. That's the other reminder is as we get physically engaged with our children is to understand their giftedness, to yeah. get to know them so that they can, uh, we can find what their bent is, yeah. right? Uh, that it isn't necessarily our dream yeah. for them. It's it's what the, how the Lord's uniquely gifted gifted them for sure so it sounds like you're gotten into that uh, understanding your son very quickly yeah and, and i've been blessed again to, that he has a lot of shared interest uh but you know he has some things i mean he loves absolutely loves this game fortnite i absolutely just hate it and so it's one of those things that you know again trying to meet him halfway of where he's at understand he likes the things that he likes and that's cool and another thing from my dad you know pulling in from that my dad was not very musical uh, you know, he'd tell you you can't really even play the radio very well, but he loved music. Uh, so when I started playing music and really getting involved with it, I mean, he was at all the shows. He was at all the stuff. He'd see me play on Sunday mornings. He really would. He started coming to church regularly, and some of that was his life began to change. But a lot of it was he loved to see me play. Sure. And so he was very proud of me, and so he would encourage those dreams. Um, yeah. I remember specifically being young and little, and I, I told him, I want to do what you do, Dad, you know, and, and, uh, and at the time he was – uh, working for a company called Air Products and, uh, you know, traveling on uh, operator basically, but he would travel to different plants all over the place mm -hmm. and uh, pump hydrogen, nitrogen, all those kind of things. And he immediately was like, no, you're not going to do what I do. And he was like, I, I don't want that for you. He's like, you got other things that mm -hmm. you have talents and giftings that I don't have that, you mm -hmm. know, I want to see you move in those areas. Mm -hmm. And so even from a young age, I didn't fully understand. At first I was kind of like, well, you know, kind of like, well, why not? You know, kind of thing. And then, and then now that I look back on it, and I see what he was doing. He was mm. like, no, 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 don't. Yeah. That for you, that would be that. I mean, yes, this is a good job. It provides what we need. I, I find fulfillment in it. But for you, that would not. That would be settling. You mm. need to go do where your giftings are, where God is calling you. You know, and he wouldn't even fully know that language at that point. But right. that's essentially what he was doing. You know, the, you remind me of uh, you know one of my favorite movies. Uh, you know, Kendrick Brothers have have a whole series of Christian films. They were kind of on the cutting edge of mm. having Christian films that people would want to watch. Oh, okay. You know, the fireproof, oh, okay, the yeah, courageous, yeah, fireproof. and that type of thing. Well, the, one of the later movies, they just released one called Life Mark that I highly recommend. It's oh. an adoptive story. Oh, okay. But before that was uh, Show Me the Father. It's more of a documentary. Mm -hmm. And in there, there's a gentleman by the name of uh, Sherman Smith. Okay. And uh, he, growing up in, uh, in Ohio... He, uh, he, his dad would, you know, when he turned uh, 16, getting ready to graduate from high school, he just assumed he would go in the steel mill uh, with his, where his dad had worked, right, uh, the yeah. steel plant. And, uh, and his dad said, uh, don't buy the lie. Yeah. Don't buy the lie of, of what your limits might be as perceived mm -hmm. by the culture, as perceived in your own mind, as yeah. perceived by your peers. Yeah. You know, look into what you can do and your yeah. unique giftedness. And of course, he, he ended up, he was a tremendous athlete. He ended up with a pro football career wow. and a coaching career. That's awesome. And, uh, but it's his story. I, I encourage everyone to go out there and find, uh, you know, the, 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 it's called uh, Show Me the Father. Show me the Father. And yeah, it's I'll all about uh, Matthew 5, 48, perfect. Uh, like your father is perfect. Yeah. And uh, so we that's the adoptive story, isn't it? That yeah. we all have a perfect father. Yeah. Uh, we just have to live into him and uh, and praise him and thank him for the earthly fathers that we've yeah. been blessed with. Yeah. But uh, any sure. any uh, what what advice would you have for dads that are looking to uh, to make sure that they uh, are physically present uh, for their children? 
Um, I think most of it is just is really analyzing and being honest with yourself, uh, you know, and looking back and and really even maybe even clocking yourself. Uh, I've heard um, uh, different ideas of like with stopwatches and now with like Apple watches and smartphones, you can do this pretty easily. But actually start when you start spending time with your child or your wife, start that stopwatch. See how much time you are actually spending them with them in the day. And then compare it to how much are you on, uh, you know, the internet, or how much are you doing other things that maybe aren't priorities or needs. Obviously, you got to work, but even then, do you have to work as much as you are? And so, what is what is the trade off? You know, a little less money, maybe, but is that worth the investment of building up your family? Sure. And and so, I, I think you just have to be intentional. There's really not an easy trick. It's just really being taking an honest look and for those especially when you know following jesus we have the the advantage of just asking holy spirit holy spirit am i you know am i really am i present enough Hmm. you know and and really listening for what he tells and what he shows us and it reveals in our hearts because the heart is um is deceptive you Mm -hmm. know i mean we can think man we're killing it and then one day your wife comes to you and tells you she's completely miserable has been for the last six months and you're totally blindsided you're like whoa I thought I was doing everything great. And it turns out, no, you weren't. <laughs> so I'm not as good as I thought. Yeah. I was. <laughs> and, 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 and I think, and it being intentional with that, I think it starts by asking too. I like to ask my wife, you know, Hey, we, every year we have this deal. We do every wedding anniversary. We sit at a table with each other and we ask tough questions and we say, Hey, what'd you like about this year? Mm-hmm. What were some high, what were some good moments in our marriage? You know, what did you not like? What are some things that I can change? What are some things I can do better at? And that's a tough question to ask and really want your spouse to give you the honest answer because sometimes they say things that hurt your feelings a little bit. You're like, oh, you know, but if you don't ask, you won't know. And and same thing with your your, your kids, you know, just ask them, hey, you know, hey, buddy, this last thing, last month, how you been feeling? That's one of the things we do in foster care intentionally that you probably don't do as much with your bio kids because you're just kind of like, hey, I, I take care of you, right? Like you're here. Uh, but it, with foster kids, you need to ask them. We ask, would ask Michael every month, hey, how are you enjoying it here? Mm-hmm. What are some things you're liking? Or some things that maybe you're you're not sure about, mm. you know, and really hearing honest feedback from him of like what he likes about it, mm. what he, he's enjoyed about being in our family, what are things that he would like to see more of, and most of the time all his things are like I want to travel together. I want to. He's that's his thing. Like he hasn't been in foster care, you can't really travel very far, sure, right? Sure. And so we're about to adopt him, and he's wanting man, he's wanting to go on trips. Like I want to go here, I want to go there as a family. So that's something that we can do with him sure. that shows him, man, we, we value you, we love you. We're going to we're gonna spend money and we're going to take trips cool, and do things with you. So I think part of that is my advice would be, one, is taking an honest assessment, seeking the Lord, and asking. Asking your spouse, asking your kids. Just say, hey, you know, where, where can dad improve? And be vulnerable. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and be willing to listen to what they say. Because our tendency sometimes is to think, oh, they don't, they don't really mean that or they don't really know. And that's again you're just you're not really taking an honest look at their perspective because you may not be doing everything they're saying you're doing or maybe you are doing some of the things they just don't see it mm-hmm. but if they don't see it if they're not perceiving it then it's Perception not truth reality right? yeah. yeah and yeah. so mm-hmm. that that's uh that would be i guess my great, two cents <laughs> great no that's that's like full nickel I think. yeah full thing <laughs> so yeah no, yeah i think that, uh, it's great advice so uh, dads i hope you hear that that uh, the idea is to be real and ask those questions listen to the answers and uh, maybe follow up questions to say you know uh where where can i improve yeah, and how am i doing can I, how, <laughs> yeah. what can i do better uh, and uh, also that uh, that big uh, big word is intentionality mm-hmm. to be intentional in your efforts to be the dad uh, the husband the father the the man that God is calling you to be so mm-hmm. uh, thank you Matt for your heart and uh, yeah, discussing this you. first tenet of the faithful fathering prioritizing sure. physical it's, presence it's, and it, uh, that's a good one and dads I encourage you to, to uh, just stay tuned keep uh, tuning into the podcast and uh, and focus in on being the man the husband father you're called to be. God bless you guys speaking.